Okay, so this is uh, Resurrection of the Author, the in last Intenders exhibition of the year. Um, kind of consists of some landmark works, some really good stuff, and some new, uh, fresh artwork from some of the new Intentists uh, recently to join the movement. Uh, overall, it's gone quite good. There hasn't been too many problems with the hanging of the show. Um, the work's come together really nicely, and the artists are all going to be here. Uh, so hopefully, it's going to be a good evening, and everyone's going to enjoy themselves. Hi, uh, my name is Vittorio Pelosi. Um, I'm a painter. I'm a founding member of the uh, arts movement in Tentism. We're an international art movement um, of writers, of uh, philosophers, of, of poets, of artists, of, of photographers, of musicians that believe that all meaning is the outworking of intention, uh, which has become quite a controversial subject over the last sort of 30, 40 years in, in literary schools and also in, in, in the art world. It's been very interesting for me to be part of the Intentist movement and to explore how intention works in, in the field of, of poetry, to see how in something that is essentially linear, you can explore um, how you make changes and, and that creative process, which is about dead ends and is about making mistakes, as well as finding things that work for you and things you want to incorporate in the finished finish piece of work. Uh, my name is uh, Jan Sitek. Um, I was introduced to the Intentism movement by a good friend of mine called Sidney Huntington. Um He basically approached me at my uni, he goes to my uni University of East London. Um, he explained that he felt that my paintings were very uh, intentist in the way I used the paints, in uh, the way I used my subject matter, and uh, in the way I used my... Uh, ancestorism which is kind of a form of uh, layering which is not always paint it's sometimes text or uh, a layering of material but he felt that I've, I use this a lot in the way I, I work. Artists who have influenced my work um, essentially uh, an artist called Giorgio Morandi who um, spent his entire life painting bottles and uh, I thought I'd I was drawn to this subject um, because I'm interested in painting very mundane objects. Um, there's, there's a kind of almost um, Zen idea there, um, where that there's a beauty in, in something really, really insignificant. Um, and I'm, I'm, but I'm very much uh, a painter who works, who's, who's into process, and, and I really get kind of, which is, which is quite related to. Um, intentism anyway. My name is Patricia Stepanovic. I am originally from Slovenia and I'm currently studying fine art photography in London. Um, I am exhibiting tonight at the Intentism exhibition um, and it's uh, three photographs, three black and white solarized photographs from a series called Insight. I will probably be sticking to surrealist photography for quite a while because I like the alternative processes and um, I think uh, the idea behind it is to kind of um, show the everyday, but in a very strange way. The title of that work is called Delusion. And I try to describe our modern philosophy that uh, our like, uh, education system, our social system, what's going on, modernism after, I think, the, after, you know, the beginning of 20th century, the people in art, in the science, in art, everybody start to thinking this is a in, enlightenment in art and philosophy. And all debates comes like uh, someone said philosophy, philosopher said this is a uh, enli enlightenment in uh, knowledge, it's, it came from the philosophy. So we're very excited to have this exhibition just off Brick Lane at the moment, uh, our third Intentism exhibition, um, and it shows the theory in practice. So we've got three main areas where artwork is different from most artwork at the moment that bears out our Intentist theory. One is the idea of irony, that you only understand something as being ironic if you compare the work with the creator's intentions. So we've got some ironic work. We've got some palimpsest work, which is where the artist leaves some of the creative trail, some of the mistakes in the editing process in the final work, so you can see that um, intentional trail. 
Uh, we've also um, got some work that's a narrative where there's no linear structure where you begin and where you end when you look at the work. So um, it kind of discounts all the idea of the fusion of horizons of Gadamer and Heidegger and Ricoeur, where they would say you can have many different interpretations when your own narrative fuses with the work's narrative. So it's trying to get that idea that the intention of the artist or the creator is the cause of the, of the meaning of the work. The themes in my work tend to be personal stories, um, family histories and things that I keep finding out about my family, um, just going through all the ephemera that I've, I've collected. So at the moment I've got the two chairs which are portraits of my grandfather and father um, and this is a new experience for them and it reads differently because it's just the two of them. I haven't exhibited them together before, just them. I've had the full family or just one of them on their own. My piece specifically called Thomas is uh, based on um, a photograph of my brother when he was a baby and uh, I kind of like the notion of uh, portraying someone uh, in a past time. The palette I used, the colour palette, was very uh, is, was, you know, I like the fact that a lot of viewers came up to the work and said they couldn't tell whether it was a, a European baby or an Asian baby or an African baby, which is exactly what I intended to um, portray in my painting, a kind of multicultural baby, an and androgynous kind of baby, which really kind of fought ag against the classical idea of what portraiture intends to be, which is, you know, a uh, portrayal of a king or a prince or someone that's very regal and someone that's kind of been set out to uh, look a certain way. My work is called the School of Postmodernism which is influenced by Raphael's School of Athens and it's uh, a look at all different uh, theories and, and, and thinkers and artists related to postmodernism and they're involved in life drawing uh, uh, experience and uh, all the paintings and drawings that they're doing is seen through the eyes of their own theory uh, of postmodernism so nothing is particularly objective, there's a lot of subjectivity there and all the most iconic postmodern thinkers are there. It's in the same three wing in the National Gallery uh, because that is uh, the part of the National Gallery which has pre-Renaissance uh, iconography. So we've got iconic, iconic images of, of Madonna and uh, David Beckham which are great postmodern icons um, and it's symbolising that whole idea that you can be doing something that's very objective like a life model um, experience um, and yet everything you do is very subjective because of your postmodern theories and, and, and baggage. Frederick, David Frederick, he said, F David Frederick Casper from German artist, he claimed that it comes first from the studio, artist's studio. Well, I try to describe how, when I, when I see what's happening in a society, bank system, our parliament systems, or, or the climate change, all are going toward the death, it's all are going toward the dis distracts, you know, destruction rather than making enlightenment in our you know our generation or like this coming generation they are faced a lot with with the unnecessary burden day jobless all things I thought what what's happening after my university is all all darkness oh hey they're all I think tonight's been an absolute success uh, I mean the artists uh, they've all been here apart from one um, but it's been great that the work's been, it's been engaging everyone that's been here and peop some people we don't know, which is great. I mean, maybe the advertisement and the way we've done it. I think uh, overall it's been an absolute success. I mean, what, what would you think? Um, well, coming from a kind of curational point of view, I felt that there was a couple of hiccups at the start. But, um, you know, we were very kind of, we were involved in that, uh, that concept of... Um, kind of splitting up the more visual impacting works with the more intimate works and kind of bringing them to and fro. Mm. But I felt for our kind of, our movement and the way we wanted to kind of portray yeah. uh, the principles of our movement, I felt that it was very interesting that the fact that the left hand side of the exhibition was very intimate pieces, very uh, close up kind of photography, and then I like mm. the fact that you came round and you kind of viewed a lot more expansive, vi yeah, yeah. expansive visually impacting paintings yeah. with a lot more of a kind of wider range of palette. 
Mm. So I really enjoyed that phase. Which and that's one thing I would say as well. The last thing is the fact that the there's the landmark pieces. And they kind mm. of superimposed yeah. with with these fresher kind of things. Oh yeah, definitely. And and I think some of the fresher kind of new works of the intensives yeah. are they some of the strongest pieces. Oh, definitely, yeah. I think, it, I think overall it worked absolutely fantastically, and uh, it's been a journey. Of course, yeah, it's been, a, it's been the an end. entire learning curve.